Welcome back to this week's video. Today we're going to go over the suspension upgrades that I've done to my truck to make sure they can handle the weight of the camper. I know I've talked about this once before, but I sure do seem to get a lot of questions in the comments below about the felling wedges that I use in the spring pack. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over with you guys the four main upgrades that I've done to make sure that this truck stays nice and straight and smooth down the road and you guys see it out on the trails. The handles, whatever I throw at it. And this is how I got it to where it is now. We'll start off by talking about the truck. It's a 2015 Chevy Silverado, 3500, single rear wheel. It's a standard bed, so six and a half foot. The camper is a 2004 Arctic Fox M860. Dry weight on the camper, 3,040 pounds. The payload capacity of the truck, 3,862 pounds. Am I over the payload? Nah, maybe just a little. So I figured the best way for me to show you guys how this works is to take everything out, start from the beginning. We're going to go with the felling wedges on the bottom overload springs, then I'll show you guys the bump stops for the upper overload springs, the air brakes, and the sway bar. We're going to take a look at those things one at a time to see how does it change the handling capabilities of the truck. That was a little bit of work, but the truck's back to its stock form. I even had to get the torch out and take some of the bolts off. Last 70,000 miles, this thing's been running great. It didn't want to go back to stock. So what we're going to take a look at first, what's the height of the truck without any modifications at all? Then we'll put the airbags up to 100 PSI. Sit in stock, the wheel wells measure at 39, three quarter inches. With the airbag set at 100 PSI, we're looking at 42, three quarter inches. It's about a three inch lift. We're going to do three different tests on the truck. First one's going to be a 30 mile an hour slalom between the dotted lines. See how does the truck handle stock and then how does it feel with those airbags all the way up. Second test, it's going to be subjective. How do I think it feels one compared to the other? And the third test, it's going to be a 45 mile an hour curve. It's just right down the road here. So let's go check those out. Rolling completely stock, I can tell you that the truck is sitting at a slant. Feel like I'm looking at the sky. It's definitely not sitting level like it once was. And the problem being at night, my headlights are gonna be shining right in someone's eyes. Let's try that 30 mile an hour slalom, see how it feels. Let's see, here we go, 30 miles an hour. It doesn't feel too bad. The truck feels pretty solid on the ground. straight itself out pretty quickly. Not too bad. Test number two, stock suspension. Airbags set at 100 pounds. You'll just have to believe me. 30 miles an hour. Let's see how she handles. Wow, you can tell that we are floating on air. Holy buckets, you can barely even do it. There is a lot of movement here. Yikes. All right, 45 mile an hour curve. I'm going 50 miles an hour right now. Let's see how it handles. This is gonna be stock. It pretty much handles just fine. I have no problem keeping in my own lane. Doesn't feel like the truck is wandering around and I don't feel like I'm excessively leaning. That was pretty easy. Same curve, same speed. We got the airbag set to 100 PSI. It even feels like my front end's coming up a little bit when I'm going around the curb. Just running straight down the road, the airbags do just fine. The nice thing is at night, I wouldn't be blinding people with my headlights. So here's what I've learned so far. Stock suspension, the truck doesn't handle too bad, but it doesn't sit right. The airbags took care of that problem, but then really worse than the ride quality. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna engage the overload springs a lot quicker. And the way that we're gonna do that is with felling wedges. These guys right here, I got a big one for the back, little one for the front. You can see that I drilled a hole through there, countersunk the top, that way a carriage bolt can fit through with no problems at all. All we have to do is install these guys between the leaf pack and the lower overload. This is gonna make the truck a lot more stable. 
This lower overload spring had a rattle pad here. Took that out, the hole was already there. Now we just put our felling wedges in place. Just that easy. put these on with locking nylon washers before this time I don't have any just have some stainless stuff so that's what we're gonna be using all right felling wedges are in place I'm gonna just hit them with a little bit of spray paint cover them up so you don't see them so there's a company out there called torque lift that sells a product just specifically for this if you guys don't like the idea of using felling wedges go to that company torque lift look for stable loads they sell upper and lower stable loads they're quite expensive but from what I've read they do a good job Torklift actually reached out to me about two months ago and asked me if I'd do a review on their stable loads. And I told them that I was really happy with these felling wedges and for 20 bucks, you can't beat the price. So let's take a look and see if these wedges give us any lift. 40 and three quarters. So we got about an inch lift from the factory ride. So now if we take a look at it, we can see we got our leaf pack, our lower overload. The good news is this leaf pack is engaging with the wedge which is engaging lower overload right away should be a lot more stable ride here's the bad news if we take our look at our upper overloads that spring's still not engaged so now we're going to go down the road again we're going to try the slalom we'll try that 45 and we'll see if having the lower overload engaged is going to make the truck any more stable i'm also going to be showing you guys the upper overload so you can see what's going on there and then we're going to talk about the fix for that first test It'll be this 30 mile an hour slalom. Wow, well, I mean, I was able to hit all of them and straighten right back out. That was pretty simple. That was a lot better. So now we're coming up to the 45 mile an hour churn and I'm going to be getting in it right at about 50 miles an hour. The big difference is the front of the truck's not lifting up like it was when I was using the airbags. The whole truck seems to be staying flatter. Much easier. So that run went pretty well, but I'm gonna bet that there was a gap between the upper overload and the perch that was opening and closing. I think that if we can fix that, we'll be even more stable. So these bump stops I found by going online, I picked them up, they're just a universal fit. These are a two inch bump stop. The company's name is Energy Suspension. Back then, this was as big as they had. Now I see they have four inch and four and a half inch. I probably would have stepped up to something larger. Let's get these put back in. Pretty simple install. So let's go hit the road now and see how much of a difference this bump stop makes on that upper overload spring. Hopefully we're not opening and closing the gap as much as we were before. And hopefully the truck is riding more on that overload spring. Nice by those big four inch bump stops. We'll see what this one does. Definitely gets easier every time. The last and final upgrade big wig sway bar. This should keep me planted to the ground and feel really confident in the corners and doing that with swerving. This is an adjustable sway bar. It's got three different settings on it. I put it on in a max setting.
this here is the setup that seems to work best for me. I'm engaging my upper and lower overload springs. I've got the airbags set at about 35, 40 pounds. And that sway bar is bolted up on the heaviest setting as possible. Let's check out the swerving now and see how the truck handles. Feels like I could probably do it closer to 45 miles an hour. No problems at all. So we're coming up on the 45 mile an hour curve and I'm going in at about 50 miles an hour. There's no doubt this is the flattest that the truck has ever ridden through the curves today. The front end of the truck's not lifting up at all. Honestly, it feels like it could go at least another 15 to 20 miles an hour. That was probably the best results yet. Sun's going down. I started making this video yesterday when the sun's going down. It's like you guys have been hanging out with me all day long. So here's what I've learned in the last 25 years of owning truck campers. Number one, I'm not a mechanic, so don't take my advice. Number two, not an RV tech. Number three, I'm not a suspension specialist. So this whole video, take it with a grain of salt. Entertainment purposes only. But here's what I've learned. Airbags alone don't do the trick. You have to have something that tightens up that suspension. And it seems like the one thing that wraps everything up together is gonna be that sway bar in the back. My truck came factory with the sway bar up front, so I couldn't tell you how that's affected it. But I do know that the sway bar in the back made a huge difference in keeping the truck planted firmly to the ground. All the suspension modifications in this video are ones that I installed myself. They're all pretty easy. The airbag system, the sway bar, them felling wedges, the bump stop, all pretty easy. Anybody can do it. My suggestion to you would be to take a look at your vehicle and see what the manufacturer recommends. Definitely leave a comment down below and tell me what you guys have done to make your truck a capable truck camper hauling unit. That there is a good looking truck camper. But that sun's going down quick which means I got to get to bed, which means this video is in the bag. So I want to thank you guys. You stuck around this whole time. Unfortunately, we didn't get to go camping this week, but it's Labor Day. There's way too many people on the roads anyways. So next week, we'll get out in the truck camper. Until then, be kind, be honest. We'll see you down the road.